So, there is a lot of hype right now about the ENN Railway and what to do with it. In short, we have this very useful rail corridor that has been sitting unused for years. Today, we're going to talk about why we're not using it and why we should. Let's start with some history. Like any place in North America with colonialism, <coughs> I mean industry, rail was a necessity. As far as passenger service goes, we had three different rail lines going up the Saanich Peninsula alone. In downtown Victoria, we had huge rail yards and freight could be taken right into key destinations. Even all the way into the 90s, we had street running rail heading up Store Street. Only one major rail line hasn't been lost, the Esquimalt and Nanaimo, which we will call the ENN. It connects every major city on the island and most of the smaller towns. Not long ago, we had a dayliner service, so you could hop on a train from downtown Victoria and go to Langford, Seanigan, Duncan, Nanaimo, Parksville, and all the way up to Courtney if you want. Towards the end of the 20th century, rail in general was declining in North America and was a lot less profitable. As a result, proper maintenance of this corridor was severely neglected. In 2003, the Island Corridor Foundation was formed. They now own and manage the whole corridor. The Dayliner service was cancelled in 2011 due to safety concerns because of the neglect. Present day, we have the ENN Rail Trail, which goes all the way from the Johnson Street Bridge to the West Shore. It also continues further on up the island in some broken sections. Unfortunately, the rail bridge connecting things to downtown Victoria was lost. But there is still space reserved at Bayview Place for a station. This is the old site of the original roundhouse for the rail line. Is this close enough to downtown for a transit connection? Depends on what kind of trips this railway will serve. Stay tuned for some exciting news and my calls to action. The government has studied the possibility of returning island rail service over and over and over and over again. In North America, we have a tradition of analysis paralysis. We like to look at the feasibility of doing something, but we don't have the political will to actually put the money down and commit to it. In 2020, a beautifully detailed feasibility report came out with realistic, totally doable plans for re-establishing service in multiple stages. It also showed that while there is a lot of appetite for running Victoria to West Shore commuter service on the ENN, supported by both the Island Corridor Foundation and many citizens, only a few hundred people would use that service. On the other hand, along the same Douglas Street route that buses currently take, many thousands of people would use a light rail service, showing that, as a separate transit service for the region, would be worth the investment. A group called Restore Island Rail is also promoting commuter service, and... Well, they do make some great points, like how it would create good jobs, and that we can improve the rail conditions drastically, and quite quickly, using some modern machinery that is nearby. But, I mean, I'll spare you having to look at the website, it's just, it's so cringe. Cringe is a problem when it comes to advocacy, okay? If your website is spammy and uses all caps and is written clearly by boomers and makes unnecessary claims, it's not productive advocacy. One of these two organizations, either the ICF or Restore Island Rail, floated the idea that it would only cost $400 million to restore service, which many rail experts believe is not going to be a realistic price tag. This kind of advocacy is harmful to our cause because people will be upset when the price inevitably ends up higher. Also, in the present day, Victoria is connected to the rest of the island primarily by the Malahat. If you live on the island, you probably know that this is a dangerous roadway that regularly gets closed for hours on end because heavy trucks are going too fast because of totally normal weather conditions, etc. It's just generally a bad road and when it closes down, it impacts everyone. Just, just bearing that in mind, considering the fact that the ENN parallels the Malahat, When I began making this video, the corridor was in the public eye thanks to an ongoing legal dispute involving the Snonoas First Nation. It's really unfortunate. The line cuts right through the middle of their territory and is a huge obstacle to the use of their land. 
Understandably, they wanted back the land that was stolen from them. On March 14th, the Federal Court of Appeal decided to return the land to the nation. Transportation Minister Rob Fleming announced some funding for further consultation and collaboration with First Nations along the island and made a statement about how the railway is still important and that people want it, effectively kicking the can down the line once again. The Snow-Noah's Nation's land is north of Nanaimo, so it's possible service could be abandoned for now north of Nanaimo. However, there was a lot of song and dance about still using the corridor, so for now, this decision has no clear implications. The rest of the corridor north of Nanaimo should still be preserved due to the cost of acquiring land, and it might have other roles within those communities. Just for clarity, let's have a look at what their lawyer had to say. What was their case? A member of the Sonoas Nation insisted that the hundreds of millions needed for this project could be better spent elsewhere. That is not an issue. The BC government has committed $500 million towards subsidizing the cost of BC ferries, which is primarily used by vehicles, and still pumps billions of dollars in subsidies into the oil and gas industry. If the BC government stopped actively investing in projects that destroy our climate and trample the rights of indigenous people, there would be more than enough money for initiatives to support those people, along with money for rail. The biggest expense in railway projects is land acquisition. If we had to buy the entire corridor to build the ENN railway again, well, it would never happen. It would cost way too much. Whenever possible, we need to preserve this railway land. Now, let's look towards the future. I can confidently say that the ENN is not made to serve commuters between Victoria and Langford. The route is just not good for that. We already have the Douglas Corridor that might be home to light rail in the future that is more transit oriented. The ENN is for regional freight and passenger rail. In the future, regardless of the amount of money that we spend on this, transit and rail will be worth the investment. Consider the cost of the status quo. Roads suck. The amount of wear that a vehicle places on the road is exponential to its weight. So a semi-truck does 400 times more damage to the road than a typical car. Now think of all the damage being done to our roads by buses and huge trucks. The section of rail in Nanaimo alone that is currently operating at minimum capacity is already taking 2,900 trucks off the roads every single year. In the future, for freight rail, we could buy the BMW dealership and create a warehouse depot there. From there, we can send things into the city on cargo bicycles and small trucks. Just an interesting distribution idea, and I'm just throwing it out there. Now it's time for my calls to action. I have three calls, two for the BC government and one for you, the viewers. To the BC government, we must immediately establish bus service between Victoria and Nanaimo and every community in between. Intercity travel must be provided as a public service. This will demonstrate that there is demand for intercity travel, because there always is. 2. BC Government for this call, I first have to provide some context. A game-changing $1 billion proposal was recently put forward by a company to run intermodal container service between Port Alberni and Nanaimo. Yes, there are some major problems with international shipping that I might touch on in another video. The project would see much of the corridor revitalized, opened up for passenger, freight, and tourism rail, and walking and cycling trails constructed alongside the line. BC Government I call on you to support this proposal and work with Island Rail Corp to ensure this project happens. I call on you to support businesses up and down the island, especially in Victoria, in connecting to this revitalized rail network. Number 3. You, the viewer, can advocate for the return of Island Rail. Think about the following points when putting forward your voice. 1. Transit is a public good. We deserve non-car options for intercity travel. We deserve nothing less. Number two, for the safety of everyone and for resiliency, we need an alternative to the Malahat. The BC government was prepared to build an alternate road. Number three, future freight rail will make our highways way safer and way smoother for much longer. 
Once again, at minimum capacity, the short stretch of rail that is active in Nanaimo takes the equivalent of 2,900 trailer trucks off the roads every single year. Less trucks and less cars is better for everyone in so many ways. Number four, when advocating for rail. Point out the fact that I like trains. That's all. My three calls are BC Government. Establish intercity bus service for all communities, up to Nanaimo at a minimum. BC Government. Support the Allen Rail Corp proposal and encourage businesses to create and use rail terminals. Viewers, share this video, advocate for the above points, and advocate for passenger rail service on this beautiful island.